All right, so thank you all so much for joining me for a 75 minute yoga class that I'm calling Ghosh Flow. We're gonna follow the sequence of 26 and two uh, yoga, also known as Bikram yoga, but we're gonna add in some elements of vinyasa and some postures from someone named Vishnu Ghosh, who is actually Bikram's guru and mentor. So um, the postures that we're doing are in the lineage of Kolkata yoga that 26 and two uh, stems from. When you're doing this, especially if you're doing it for the first time or the second time with the new postures, take it easy, listen to your body. If something doesn't feel right, feel free to skip it, modify or do something else. And if you ever have a question about a posture, just make a mental note and ask me after class. The last note I will make is normally when I teach this class, my mat is facing you, but because of the space I'm in today in my Airbnb in Seattle, my mat is facing the long way. So I might get a little bit confused about times where I'm facing you versus times where I'm showing you from periphery. So just apologies for that in advance. All right, we're gonna start with two sets of pranayama deep breathing. Bring your feet close together, toes, heels touching nicely. Interlock your 10 fingers, cross your thumbs and bring your knuckles underneath your chin like glue. You'll inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth all the time against the back of your throat. Your nose and your mouth are just a passageway. Breathe as much as possible, as long as possible, as slow as possible. Don't forget to have fun and begin. Inhale, chin down and arms up. Breathe in through your nose. Lift your elbows up. Suck your stomach in. Fill up your lungs. Exhale, head up. Exhale through your mouth. H-A, sound, head back. Arms forward, elbows touch. Good. Inhale, chin down. Slowly bring your chin down. Look straight ahead. Lift your elbows all the way up. Breathe deep, full lungs. Exhale, head up. Slowly push your head back. Look way, way, way back for the wall behind you. Arms forward, elbows touch. Inhale, head down. Breathe in through your nose, down through your throat to the very bottom of your lungs. Exhale, head up. As you exhale, open your mouth wide like you're fogging up a mirror on the ceiling. Inhale, head down for one, two, three, four, five, six, full lungs. Exhale, head up, six, five, four, three, two, elbows touch, one. Inhale, head down, keep the weight in your heels, glue your ankle bones together, squeeze your inner thighs, squeeze your butt. Exhale, head up, lock your legs, weight stays in your heels, hips a little forward, kneecaps lifted, elbows touch. Inhale, head down, keep a flat back, just your neck and arms are moving, shoulders down, chest up, spine straight from the side. Exhale, head up. So just your head drops back, the rest of the spine stays nice and long, shoulders over hips, hips over heels, weight in the heels. Inhale, head down, stomach, 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 depression to abdominal wall, contraction to abdominal muscles. Exhale, head up, suck your stomach in even as you exhale, eyes back, look back, arms forward, elbows touch. Inhale, head down, this is the last breath in the first set, spine a little longer, elbows a little higher, lungs a little fuller, suck your stomach in, breathe deep, full lungs, exhale, head up, take your time, eyes open, hips forward, legs locked, stomach in, keep exhaling, push, squeeze, elbows touch, good, change, arms down, you can roll out your shoulders and head. We'll continue, second set, feet together, interlock your 10 fingers, cross your thumbs, bring your knuckles underneath your chin like glue, squeeze your thighs, Squeeze your butt, grow taller out of the base of your spine and begin, inhale, chin down and arms up, breathing in through the nose, lift your elbows up, suck your stomach in, fill up your lungs. Exhale, head up, exhale through your mouth, slowly head back, slowly arms forward, elbows touch away from your body. Inhale, head down for one, two, three, four, five, six, full lungs. Exhale, head up, six, five, four, three, two, elbows touch, one. Inhale, head down, use the full six seconds to inhale, slowly chin down, elbows up. Exhale, head up, use the full six seconds to exhale, synchronize your breath with your body movements, elbows touch, lungs empty. Inhale, head down, so it's a slow deep breath against the back of the throat, it's called ujjayi breathing. Exhale, head up, so your um, exhale, Sounds a little bit like Darth Vader breathing, elbows touch. Inhale, and your inhale is a little bit of a snoring sound against the back of the throat, but you're not using your vocal cords. Exhale, head up. Head back, arms forward, elbows touch. 
Inhale, head down. Every new inhale, you want to take in more and more and more air. Exhale, head up. The more you exhale here, the more fresh oxygen you can take in on your next breath. Push the air out. Inhale, head down. This is the last breath in the second set. Deepest breath of your life. When your lungs are totally full, surprise yourself. Take in one more sip of air. Exhale, head up. Take your time. Let everything go through the exhale breath. Any worries, any cares, let them go. Be here now. Elbows touch. Good. Change. Arms down. We continue with half moon with hands to feet pose. Ardha Chandrasana with Padastasana. Feet together. Inhale, arms overhead, palms together. Interlock your fingers, release your index fingers, cross your thumbs, nice tight grip. Stretch up out of your waist and bend right and left, right and left. Every time you pass through the middle, reach up a little taller. Good, and when you can't stretch anymore, come to stop in the middle. Bring the weight into your heels, push your hips a little forward, squeeze your palms together, upper body back, touch your biceps to your ears. Inhale, breathing, stretch up out of your waist, try to touch the ceiling. Exhale, breathing absolutely straight lines, slowly bend your body to the right. Without bending your elbows or knees, continuously push your hips to the left beyond your flexibility. You're trying to create a tremendous stretching feeling in the left side of your body, all over, inside out, bones to skin, fingers to toes. Just remember it's the first posture of the day and there's no rush, know where you need to be, nothing you have to do, Nothing you have to prove to anyone else. All you have to do is breathe. As you inhale, lengthen your arms. As you exhale, come down, push, push, push. Change, inhale to come up, hips forward, arms back, stretch up tall, and slowly bend to the left as you press your hips to the right. Coming down without bending your elbows, without bending your knees, push your hips to the right. Keep the weight in your heels, hips a little more forward, upper body back, touch your biceps to your ears. Push your right hip forward to keep your two hips in line. Now bring your left shoulder forward. Open your chest like a flower petal blooming. Come down, push and push and push. Change, inhale to come up. First back bend of the day. I'm gonna show you from the side. This is the only posture that I cannot show and tell at the same time. So take a deep breath, full lungs. Keep your eyes open and relax your head as far back to, as it goes. Give your head a gentle shake. Look for the floor behind you. Squeeze your butt, lift your chest and bring your arms back with your ears. Try to touch the wall behind you. So whole spine backward bending, whole front of the body stretching. Keep the weight in your heels, push stomach, thighs, hips forward, and then bring your arms back, look back, fall back, way back, go back, more back. Good, change. Inhale to come up, stretch up. Exhale, bend your knees and go down. Put your hands on the floor, relax your head, and go for a walk, bend one knee, straighten the other, move your hips right and left. This is a U-turn from back bending to forward folding. At the beginning of class, your spine might not be quite warmed up yet. Move your hips to get your lower back nice, relaxed, comfortable, easy, and flexible. As a heads up, in 26 and 2 yoga, after we do hands to feet pose, we would just like change, right, and come to the next posture. But after we do hands to feet pose here, we're going to go into a sun salute, just so you know. Okay, Padastasana, hands to feet pose, bend your knees halfway. You can grab the backs of your calves your Achilles or your heels from underneath, step on all 10 fingers. Pull on your heels, roll forward like a wheel into your toes and lift your hips up. Stretch your upper body down from the lower spine to the floor. Keep your elbows wrapped behind you, stomach to thighs, chest to knees, relax your head completely. See if you can touch your face to your shins below your knees. No room for light and air between the upper and lower body. Pull on your heels, roll forward like a wheel, lift your hips up to stretch your spine down. So just be aware that when we come out of this posture, we're going to go into a halfway lift. So release the grip on your heels or the backs of your legs and on your next inhale, lift up halfway so that your back is flat and the weight is in your toes. You can have your hands on your thighs, your shins, or even the floor in front of you. Exhale, bend your knees, hands to floor, step back into a high plank or tabletop. From here on your next exhale, stomach in, hug your elbows in and lower down halfway. Inhale, come up into a back bend. You can do baby cobra with elbows bent and thighs on the floor, or up dog with arms straight and thighs off the floor. Exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up for down dog. Bend one knee, straighten the other, try to get heels to the floor, hips to the ceiling, drop your head. And if down dog does not feel right for your body, take a child's pose instead. Come down onto your knees, sink your hips down and reach your arms forward. So every plank can be a tabletop. 
And every down dog can be a child's pose. Every up dog can be a baby cobra, right? So there's lots of options within the vinyasa sequence. On your next inhale, hands on the floor. Look forward and step forward. Lengthen back into your halfway lift. Exhale, bend your knees and fold. Inhale, arms with your ears. Come on up, change. Root to rise, looking up. Exhale, hands down. So this sequence is a little bit of a blend between a vinyasa sun salute and a Bikram moon salute. So second set, feet together. Inhale, arms overhead, palms together. Interlock your fingers, release your index fingers, cross your thumbs, stretch up, and slowly bend to the right as you press your hips to the left. Keep the weight in your heels, hips a little more forward, upper body back, touch your biceps to your ears. Push your left hip forward, two hips in line, right shoulder forward, two shoulders in line, come down, push and push and push. Change, inhale to come up, stop in the middle. Hips forward, arms back, stretch tall, and slowly bend to the left as you press your hips to the right. Keep your chin and chest lifted. It's a very proud posture, and you have so much to be proud of for practicing yoga today. Good for you. As you inhale, lengthen your arms. As you exhale, come down, push and push and push. Change, inhale to come up. Second heart opener, take a deep breath, full lungs. Keep your eyes open. Relax your head all the way back. Squeeze your butt, lock your legs, lift your chest and bring your arms back with your ears. Try to touch the wall behind you. Keep the weight in your heels, push your hips forward and bring arms back, look back, fall back, way back, go back, more back change. Inhale to come up, stretch up first, decompress the spine. Exhale, bend your knees, hinge at your hips, go down with a flat back, straight spine, hands to floor, then relax your head, go for another walk. Move your hips, shake your head. Notice what's a little bit more loose in the second set, what's still a little tight or tender. It's good to take stock at the beginning of class and know what you're working with. Second set, Padasasana, bend your knees, stomach in. You can grab the backs of your legs or your heels from underneath, pull on your heels, roll your weight into your toes and lift your hips up. So, so this is meant to be a calming posture, bringing blood towards the brain. Roll forward, lift your hips, pull, stretch, lengthen your spine. Change, lift up halfway, inhale. Exhale, hands to floor, step back into your high plank or tabletop. You can go straight from your plank or tabletop directly into your child's pose or down dog or take a vinyasa, lowering down, and then inhale, come up into your back bend. If you do up dog, get your thighs off the floor. If your thighs are touching the floor, bend your elbows for baby cobra. It is safer for your spine and your shoulders. Exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up for down dog, or sink your hips down for child's pose. And know that like, you know, down dog or child's pose, one is not better than the other, they're just different, right? Same thing with baby cobra and up dog, same thing with tabletop or plank. So if you ever have to adjust in class, which variation you're taking, please feel free to do so. On your next inhale, look forward, step forward, lengthen, halfway lift. Exhale, bend your knees, fold, relax your head. Inhale, arms with your ears, root to rise, lifting up, looking up. Exhale, hands down. Wonderful. Third set, a little bit different. Feet together, arms overhead, palms together. Only cross your thumbs. Keep the rest of the fingers uninterlaced. Thumbs cross. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, slowly bend to the right. Push your hips to the left for five, four, three, two, one, change, inhale to come up, hips forward, arms back, stretch up, and bend to the left. So this is how you would do a moon salute in Ghosh yoga, right? In Bikram's uh, teacher's yoga, come down, push, change, inhale to come up, it come, goes pretty fast. Take a deep breath, full lungs, keep your eyes open, drop your head back, back bending together for five seconds. Change, inhale to come up. Exhale, go down. Final set, Padastasana, right away. Grab the backs of your legs or heels, no warm up. Pull on your heels, roll forward like a wheel. Lift your hips up, push your knees back, lock your legs, lock your legs, lock your legs. Change, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands to floor, step back into your high plank. Keep exhaling, lower down. Inhale, come up into your up dog. Exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up, down dog. Bend one knee, straighten the other, try to get heels to floor, spread your fingers wide, root down through all 28 knuckles, especially the space between your index finger and thumb. Inhale, look forward, step forward, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, root your eyes, come on up, look up. 
Exhale, hands down. Wonderful. Next is awkward Utkatasana. Step your right foot to the right, six inches, hip width distance, inside to your feet, parallel. Arms up, parallel to the floor. Try to sweat muscles tight. Stomach in, bend your knees, sit back and down into a chair, feet flat position. Spine straight to begin with, 100% of your body weight in your heels. Sit down halfway only, hips into a chair. Suck your stomach in and lean your upper body back, lift your chin up, chest up. Lean back, fall back, way back, try to fall down backwards at the end. Change, inhale to come up, keep your arms there. Push your hips a little forward, spread your toes wide. Now come up all the way on your tiptoes like a ballerina. Stretch up first, bend your knees and sit down. Lean back, touch your head and hips to a wall behind you. Heels a little higher, knees a little higher. Change, inhale to come up. Last part, squeeze knees together. Keep the insides of your feet parallel. Let your heels come a little off the floor and slowly sit down. Take your time, slower you do, better you do. Stop when you're a half inch gap between hips and heels. Squeeze your knees together and forward. Lift your chest, relax your shoulders and change. Slowly come up, knees together, triceps tight. Good, change, heels down, right foot back, arms down. Second set, you have the option to do just like first set or I'll give you some different variations. So second set, step your right foot to the right, six inches. You can have your arms up parallel to the floor, good for counterbalance, or you can have your hands together in prayer, heart center, lift up, and then bend your knees and sit down. Option to stay here or bring left elbow to right outside knee corner, and then twist so that your thumbs are in the center of your sternum heart space. Option to stay here or spread your arms apart, right arm up to the ceiling, left arm down towards your big toe, turn, twist. Good, bring your hands back together, heart center, unwind, other side, bringing right elbow to outer left knee, and then look up towards the ceiling, left elbow up, right elbow down. Option to stay here or open the arms wide, bring your hips a little to the right, and then look up towards your left thumb. Good, hands back together at heart center, unwind and everybody together, change, inhale to come up and now spread your toes wide, come up all the way in your tiptoes, stretch up, bend your knees, sit down and in the second set, option to fold forward and bring the arms back. So thumbs facing the floor, palms facing inward, heels a little higher, knees a little higher. Good, change, inhale to come up, balance challenge, keep your heels up, Woo. arms parallel to the floor for counterbalance, bring knees together, Heels down a little bit and then slowly sit down. Take your time, listen to your body, stop whenever you want or when you're a half inch off your heels. Now, if you're sitting all the way down today, if you have healthy knees and you wanna work on a little bit more strength and control, try coming up one inch and hold. Come up one more inch and hold. And then change, slowly come up. Woo. Heels down, right foot back. Arms down. Another vinyasa I'm showing you from the side. Inhale, oop, arms up, looking up overhead. Exhale, bend your knees, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, hands to the floor. You can step or hop back. As you inhale, come up into your up dog. Exhale, tuck your toes under. Lift your hips up, down dog. So the last option you have is to hop or float from your uh, lift into your plank. If you are floating into plank, what you don't want to um, float and land with, uh, sorry, words are hard. You don't want to float and land with straight arms. You want to land like you're going into your vinyasa with the elbows bent. It is much safer for elbows and wrists. So make sure if you are practicing uh, floating back that you're landing with your elbows bent rather than straight. On your next inhale, look forward. You can float or step forward, lengthening your halfway lift. Exhale, bend your knees, fold. Inhale, reach your eyes, arms with your ears coming up overhead, and we're going to flow into eagle pose. Exhale, right arm under left arm, right elbow under left elbow, palms together, thumbs towards the nose. Pull your elbows down, bend your knees, sit down, stay down there, and bring your right leg over your left leg, right over left, cross twist, and breathe in and out through your nose. So this is the format of class in the standing series, at least. We're going to do postures with some vinyasas or some sun salutes. Um, intertwined into them. And we're going to have some optional variations of postures, but you can always do the traditional 26 and 2 version of the posture too. Change feet together, arms over your head, left side, swing your left arm, zoom, under your right arm, left under right, palms together, pull elbows down, bend your knees, sit down, stay down there, and bring left leg over right leg. 
cross twist and eventually wrap your left foot behind your right calf muscle. Bring your knees to the left and upper body to the right. If your foot is coming out, sit down more. If you're losing your balance, arch your upper body back. Good, change feet together, arms over your head. So second set, see if you can do arms and legs at once. Here we go. Swing your right arm under left arm and right leg over left leg. So I always think of under over. If your foot is coming out, sit down more. If you're losing your balance, lean your upper body back, bring your knees to the right, upper body to the left, twist like ropes, sit down more, lean your upper body back at the end. Good, change feet together, arms over your head, last one. So swing left arm under right arm and left leg over right leg all at once. Knees to the left, upper body to the right. This posture is called eagle pose. The knees and elbows make the beak of the eagle. So as you sit down, think about closing the beak and then you lean back, think about opening the eagle's mouth. Good, change feet together, arms over your head. One last optional uh, sun salute, inhale, look up. Exhale, hold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands to floor step or float back landing with my elbows. Inhale, come up into your back bend. Exhale, hips up for down dog or hips down for child's pose. Remember, one is not better than the other. Try to get heels towards floor. You might need a slightly wider stance to get your heels closer to the floor. Lift your kneecaps, drop your head, slow inhale. Even slower exhale. Inhale, look forward, step forward. You can hop or step forward, lengthen, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach your eyes, arms with your ears. Come on up, looking up. Exhale, hands down. Party time. You can grab a sip of water if you want. Cheers. So fun to be here with all of you. So everything um, in this class is optional, including the sun salutes, right? So if at any point that vinyasa flowing action doesn't feel right for your body, know that you're welcome to skip it and just do like a, you know, a moment almost like a standing savasana or a mountain pose rather than, um, rather than the sun salutes. You're still being intentional with what you're doing with your body, right? You're not like pacing around, but you're, you know, right? But you're being intentional in your stillness. Okay. We're gonna balance on one leg. We're gonna flow standing uh, head to knee pose into standing bow pose. We're gonna go from one to the other on both sides twice. What could go wrong? Shift your weight to your left leg, lock your left leg and lift your right leg up. Point your toes, flex your toes. Keep your toes flexed back to your face, stomach in, round down and pick up your right foot. All 10 fingers interlocked, nice tight grip. From start to finish, standing leg should be solid, concrete, one piece. Lamp post unbroken, you have no knee. If you've been coming for a while and you know your left leg is locked, no bend, no wobble. Inhale, breathing slowly, gently lift your right leg up. Stretch it forward until your right leg is exactly parallel to the floor. No higher, no lower, standing leg locked. If both legs lock, bend elbows down. Touch elbows to calf muscles. One day elbows go below the calf muscles. Lock your knee, lock your knee, lock your knee. Change. So when you reverse out, keep that right foot lifted, left leg locked. Now bring your knees together, point your right toes, bring your right hand up, out to the right, give yourself a high five for practicing yoga, reach back, can't forget that. Pick up the inside of your right foot at the ankle bone for standing bow pulling pose. Bring your left arm up and back with your ear. And if your standing leg is starting to burn, mine is too. That's the fun. Lock your left leg, point your right toes, take a breath, stretch up and go for it. Charge your body forward. Simultaneously kick your right leg back and up. Slowly bring the body down and the leg up. See the foot come directly over the top of your head. So from the side, two heels in line. Kick back and up, two shoulders in line. Touch your chin to your shoulder. Shoulder blade scapula coming out of the body. Bring the body down more. Leg up more. Kick, kick, kick. Good. Change. Slowly kick yourself up. Other side, shift your weight to your right leg, lock your right leg, lift your left thigh up. Point your toes, flex your toes, and it should feel really good to flex your toes, right? Stretching through the calf and Achilles, stomach in, start to round down and pick up your left foot. All 10 fingers interlocked. Now, if your standing leg is bending a whole bunch, rather than thinking of like pushing your knee back, think about lifting everything up, lifting up your hips so your knee is over your ankle rather than your big toe. Once the right kneecap is engaged, right thigh lifting up, then slowly lift your left leg up. 
So in standing head to knee, we're flexing the toes back and rounding the spine. Eventually both legs lock and then bend elbows down. Stomach in, touch your elbows to your calf muscles, chest down more. One day elbows go below the calf muscles. Change, slowly reverse out, bring knees together and this time point your left toes. Bring your left hand up, out to the left, reach back and pick up the inside of your left foot at the ankle, thumb with index finger. Bring your right arm up and back with your ear. Lock your right leg, point your left toes, take a breath, stretch up and go for it. Charge your body forward. Simultaneously kick your left leg back and up. So, whoops, so if you fall out, hop back in. So in standing head to knee, right, we flex the toes and rounded the spine. In standing bow, what we're doing now, we're pointing the toes and bending the spine. So the front of the body stretches rather than compresses. Continuously keep kicking. The harder you kick, you can balance forever. Body down more, leg up more, kick, kick, kick. Good, change slowly. Kick yourself up, feet together, arms down. Second set, shift your weight to your left leg, lock your left leg, lift your right thigh up, flex your toes back, suck your stomach in, round down, and pick up your right foot. Nice tight grip, all 10 fingers under the foot, concentrate, meditate, lift your right leg up. So in standing head to knee pose, not only are we rounding the spine, we're compressing the abdominal wall. If both legs lock, bend elbows down, if elbows go below calf muscles, slowly tuck your chin to your chest, Put your forehead on your knee. And if you can touch your knee and head together, try to let go. Good, change. Take your time as you come out. Whew. Knees together. Bring your right hand up and back. Left arm up and back. Hold on to your foot. Lock your left leg. Point your right toes. Take a breath. Stretch up and slowly kick. Stretch and breathe. Kick into your hand. Stretch forward. Breathe through your nose. Kicking, stretching equal. Simultaneous, 50-50. The harder you kick, you can balance forever. Body down more, leg up more. Kick, kick, kick. Good, change, kick yourself up. Last one, bring your left leg up, flex your left toes back, stomach in, round down, pick up your left foot. All 10 fingers interlocked, relax your face. Make sure you're breathing. Here we go, lift your left leg up. If both legs lock, bend elbows down. Otherwise, stay here with me. If elbows go below calf muscles and you can balance comfortably, slowly tuck your chin to your chest and put your forehead on your knee. Stomach in, heel forward, toes back. Good. Change. Take your time as you come up. Try to keep the left leg lifted, knees together. If you want, try doing both arms at once. Three. Lock your right leg. Nice. Point your left toes. Take a breath. Stretch up and slowly kick stretch and breathe. Get the back bend. Keep the chin and chest lifted. Standing leg locked. One day kicking leg locked. Why not today? Body down more. Leg up more. Slide your right shoulder forward. Charge your body forward. Kick, kick, kick. Good. Change. Kick yourself up. Whew. Okay. Next in the balancing series is balancing stick. Tula Dandasana. First set normal. Feet together, inhale, arms overhead, palms together, interlock your fingers, release your index fingers, cross your thumbs and lean back. Step your right foot forward, a big step. Lock both legs. Lift your left foot off the floor, stretch up first. And now tilt. Arms, body, head, legs, everything parallel to the floor. From the side, body makes a T like Tom. Not a broken umbrella, stretch, stretch, stretch. Change, left foot down. Right foot back, lean back, and step your left foot forward. Shift your weight to your left foot, lift your right foot off the floor, stretch up, and now tilt. Point your right toes like you're trying to turn on a light switch behind you, chest down, chin forward, heel up, stretch. Change, right foot down, left foot back, arms down. Second set, you're welcome to do just like first set or have a little bit of an optional fun posture called split arm that I will show you from the side. Inhale, arms overhead, palms together, cross your thumbs. Exhale, step your right foot forward, a big step. Lock both legs, point your left toes and tilt. So you wanna go into it just like you would balancing stick. Once you're parallel to the floor, split your arms and keep coming down. 
look forward, chin forward, try to do a back bend standing splits. So chin away from your chest, stomach to thigh, left big toe up to the ceiling. Change, left foot down, right foot back, other side, step your left foot forward, lock both legs, point your right toes and tilt. Going down slow with control. Once you're parallel, keep coming down and then split your arms apart and bring the right foot towards the ceiling and the belly button towards the left thigh, chin away from your chest, heel up. Good, change, right foot down, left foot back, optional vinyasa, inhale, look up. Exhale, bend your knees, fold, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, hands to floor, you can step or hop back. Remember, you can always take a different variation. I'm gonna do this one on my knees. Exhale, lower down, inhale, come up into your back bend. Exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up for down dog or take a child's pose. Slow inhale, slow exhale. Inhale, look forward, step forward, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms with your ears, come on up, looking up overhead. Exhale, step your right foot to the right, four feet minimum, arms down parallel to the floor for standing, separate leg, head to knee, toes in, heels out, lock your legs, lift your chest, and swan dive forward. So we're gonna flow this posture in the next two. Grab your heels from behind, roll forward like a wheel, touch your forehead to the floor, and take a minute to catch your breath. If you can't grab your heels, try grabbing the outsides of your feet, or start with your hands on the floor in front of you. Everybody roll forward, lift your hips up, lock your legs, pull stretch, touch your forehead to the floor in between your feet. Good, change, inhale to come up. Keep your feet wide apart for triangle pose, trikonasana. Turn your right foot out. Most of us wanna take a little bit of a bigger step. Bend your right leg and lunge. Sit as low as you can, lean back and move your arms, right elbow in front of your knee. Hover your fingers just above your big and second toe. Don't touch the floor, don't push any weight on the floor. You're stronger than that. Look up to the ceiling, touch your chin to your shoulder and breathe. Drop your left thigh down, reach your left shoulder up. Now turn, twist upper body back, lock your left leg, left foot flat on the floor. Good, change, rotate your arms, straighten your right leg, right toes in. Left toes out, two heels in line. Inhale, bend your left leg and lunge, sit as low as you can. You might need to take a little bit of a bigger step to sit down more, lean back, and move your arms. Elbow in front of the knee, stretch down, hover your fingers between big and second toe, never quite touching the floor. Now look up and stretch up. Push your right hip forward and down. Push your left knee back with the help of your elbow and lift your left side body off of your left thigh. Lock your right leg, keep your right foot flat on the floor. Change, rotate your arms, straighten your left leg, turn your left toes in, arms up, palms together, cross your thumbs, standing separate leg head to knee pose. You might want a slightly smaller step. Pivot on your heels to one side of the room, turn back, toes in, push your hips forward, one, two, three, four, five times, two hips in line, two heels in line, backside foot makes a 45 degree angle, stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest, and go down, take your time, go down slow with control. Bend your front leg if you need to, touch your knee and head together. Front side compression, throat choked, eyes open, breathing normal. Stretch all 10 fingers beyond your big and second toe, bring your weight into your right foot, right hip up, left hip forward, two hips in line, throat choked, eyes open, breathing normal. Push your forehead into your knee, Lock both legs, hands together, change, slowly uncurl, take your time, head up, last. Good, pivot on your heels to the other side of the room. Uncross your heels. Make sure you still have at least 36 inches between your feet. Turn back, right toes in, and then push your hips forward, forward, forward. Stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest, and go down. Can you look at your belly button all the way down? You cannot see your front foot all the way down. Chin tucked to chest, fingers beyond the big and second toe. Bend your front leg if you need, touch knee and head together. It helps with balance and alignment to bring the weight into your front foot. It'll be easier for balance and it'll be easier for you to get your hips in line. So left hip up, right hip forward, two hips in line. Push forehead into knee, lock both legs, hands together. 
change. Slowly uncurl as if you're dragging your forehead up your thigh or chest, biceps with ears, head up last. Good. Pivot on your heels, step your right foot back and float your arms down. You're welcome to do the second set of those postures just like we did first set or I will provide some fun optional variations. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, step your right foot to the right big step, arms down parallel to the floor, lock your legs, lift your chest and swan dive forward. So you can go from here right into second set of stretching by grabbing your heels from behind or you can try a posture that's called squatting, malasana, or garland pose. For malasana, hands on the floor in front of you and take a smaller step, two to three feet between your feet. Now for this posture, bring your heels in and your toes out. Start to bend your knees and sit down. And at first that might look like this, heels off the floor with your hands on the floor, leaning forward. Eventually you're gonna bring your hips down to the, uh, heels down to the floor, hips down to the floor. And you might wanna play around with a bigger or smaller step. If you've got your heels on the floor, you're feeling comfortable here, bring your hands together in prayer and start to push the elbows out and lift your chest up. And if this is easy, then point your toes forward so the insides of your feet are parallel. Okay, hands to the floor. Everybody lift your hips up. If you're in garland pose, maybe take a little bit of a bigger step, point your toes forward, arms out parallel and change. Slowly come up for second set, triangle trikonasana. Turn your right foot out, take a bigger step, bend your right leg, sit down, lean back and move your arms. So this is option one, triangle pose like we do in 26 and two. Option two, place your right hand on the floor in front of your right foot and straighten both legs. Look up towards the ceiling for more of an Ashtanga style of triangle. Option three is a fun balancing posture called Bird of Paradise. Bend your right leg again, take your right hand in between your legs like you're trying to pat your own butt and then drape your left arm behind you and see if you can catch your hands together. Now from here, this is the fun part. You're gonna awkwardly walk your feet back together. The more you do it, the easier it is. Once your heels are touching, shift your weight to your left leg and start to lift up. Push your hips forward and if you can, straighten both legs. You want to kick your hip forward. And you can kind of see, right, the hips opening forward and the upper body leaning back is in some ways similar to triangle, right? Hips forward, upper body back. Change, bring your right foot down to the floor, take a wider step, release the bind, bring your arms up and down, 6 and 12 o'clock, and everybody reverse out, rotate your arms, straighten right leg. Whew. Right toes in by not sliding a little bit. Right toes in, left toes out, two heels in line. Bend your left leg, sit down, lean back, and move your arms. Option to do this style of triangle. Option to put left hand on the floor, straighten left leg and look up. Or option to try bird of paradise. Bend your left leg, take your left hand in between your legs, right hand behind you, bring hands together. Walk your feet back together. It's an awkward process. Shift your weight to your right leg and suction cup yourself up. Kick your left leg up, press your hips forward, open your chest. Good, bring your left foot back down to the floor. When you're ready, if you're having a breakthrough, keep going. Otherwise, we're gonna slowly reverse out, change, take your time. Left toes in, take a slightly smaller step. You have two options here. You can bring your arms overhead, palms together, cross your thumbs, like we would regularly, regularly do, or you can have your hands behind you either just holding your hands or even hands in prayer. Pivot on your heels to one side of the room, turn back toes in, push your hips forward, forward, forward. Stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest and go down. And remember that it helps with balance to have the weight in your front foot. If you have your hands behind you, if you'd like, you can interlock fingers, release index fingers, cross thumbs, and start to lift your hands up towards the ceiling and even forward to the front of your mat. It's a nice little shoulder rinse. If you're doing that shoulder rinse, bring your hands back to the base of your spine. Push forehead into knee, lock both legs, hands together. Change, slowly uncurl. Push the right foot into the floor as you come up. Head up, last. Good, pivot on your heels to the other side of the room. Uncross your heels. It is much easier to balance when your heels are in line, but not crisscross. Turn back toes in, push right hip forward, left hip back, stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest and go down. Chin to chest, stomach in, bend your front leg if you need to, touch knee and head together. Interlock your 10 fingers, 
Release index fingers, cross thumbs, bring your hands up and forward for a nice shoulder opener. If you're doing that shoulder rinse, bring your hands back down to your lower back. Push your forehead into your knee, lock both legs, hands together. Change, slowly uncurl, right hip forward, right shoulder forward, full stop at the top. Good, change, pivot on your heels, step your right foot back, optional sun salute, inhale, lift your arms up, overhead, look up. Exhale, bend your knees, fold. This is the second to last sun salute, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, hands to floor, step or walk back, keep exhaling, lower down. Inhale, come up into your up dog. Exhale into your child's pose or down dog. Spread your fingers wide, roll your shoulders down, drop your head, look towards your shins. Inhale, look forward, step forward, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms of your ears, hands together, lift up. Exhale, hands down. Good, we're gonna flow tree into toe. Lock your left leg and lift your right leg up. Heel the costume, sole of foot flat to ceiling. Slowly, gently let your right knee drop down and back. Never force your knees. Right hand up to the center of your chest. And if you can balance, left hand up. Option to stay here or flow to another fun posture called toe stand. Fold forward, hands to floor, lean forward, lift your heel, bend your knee, sit down. Walk your hands back to either sides of your hips. So for the variation for toe stand, you can try kicking your foot forward. So start by sliding your right foot forward towards your knee, bring your hands together and then see if you can kick out, maybe fall out, but if not, you're gonna reverse back, folding that right foot back, good. Okay, to come out of the posture, you can come up on two feet or put your hands on the floor in front of you, lift your hips up and then push your hips forward to reverse out. Good, change right leg down, show you from the side, lock your right leg, lift your left leg up, slowly, gently, let your left knee drop down. So one day from the side, two knees in line, doesn't have to be today or tomorrow. Left hand, and if you can balance right hand, but if your foot falls like mine does, just hold on to your foot the whole time, no problem, I'm right there with you. Toe stands start to fold forward, hands to floor first, lean forward, lift your heel, bend your knee, sit down. Walk your hands back to either sides of your hips and breathe through your nose. Left hand and right hand, and then see if you can kick your foot forward, hopefully not fall out like I did, and then reverse back. Okay, whenever you're ready, hands to floor. You can come up on two feet or lift your hips up and then push your hips forward. Good, change last vinyasa, inhale, lift your arms up, look up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, set back plank. Keep exhaling, lower down. Inhale, come up into your back bend. This is your victory lap. Exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up for down dog. Take a slow inhale. Slow exhale. Inhale, look forward, step forward, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach your eyes, lift up, looking up overhead. Exhale, hands down. Wonderful, give yourself a high five, fist bump, pat on the back, turn around. Final Savasana, or not final Savasana, belt, uh, floor series. Okay. Sorry. I'm a little discombobulated. Lie on your mat. Head to the front of your mat. Feet to the back of your mat. Heels together. Toes fall open. Arms down. Palms face the ceiling. Eyes open. Mouth closed. Breathing normal. So it's always interesting to me whenever I travel, right? Like I'm at home in Seattle. Whenever I travel or when I practice yoga, not just in a new place, but in a new space, right? Like somewhere even like different in my home, um, it feels different, right? So my words are a little bit jumbled today because I'm like, hmm, you know, the orientation of my uh, mat is different. Um, the altitude is different. The daylight is different. <laughs> the time difference is different. So apologies for mincing words. But one of my favorite things about yoga is the more we do it, the more familiar it becomes, right? And then again, like when you, you know, take class from a new teacher or you go to a new place to practice or whatever that is, it's a little unfamiliar, right? In some ways, but in other ways, the body remembers. And I absolutely love that about this style of yoga, especially 26 and two yoga, your body starts to create muscle memory, like deep grooves, right? Where you know how to lift a kneecap, 
or round a spine or flex your toes back. And so even on days where you're like a little discombobulated, even though my words are coming out a little bit confusing, um, my body still knows what to do. And I hope that you get that same experience sometimes in yoga. When the mind is a little bit frayed, the body just takes over. It's a really wonderful um, relationship that you're building between you know, your brain, your heart, your lungs, your muscles and organs, all that stuff. So I, I hope for you to have that experience if you've not already. The body remembers. Pavana Mutasana when you're moving pose. First set, normal, bend your right leg up. Interlock your 10 fingers, grab your right shin, nice tight, white knuckle grip. Pull your knee out to the right, down towards your shoulder, completely avoid your rib cage. Keep your head on the floor. Look down the center line of your body, pull down extra hard. Maximum pressure in your lower abdomen, massaging your ascending colon. Change right leg down, bend your left leg up. Interlock your 10 fingers, grab your left shin, nice tight white knuckle grip. Pull your knee out to the left and down towards your shoulder. Try to keep your right shoulder on the floor and right calf muscle on the floor. If your right leg doesn't naturally touch the floor, try flexing your right toes back to your face to anchor both sides of your body flat on the floor. Change, left leg down and both legs lift up. Grab your elbows each other, get as compact as possible, knees together, feet together, side by side, not crisscross. Keep your head on the floor, look down the center line of your body and hold still. Eventually or in the future, when the bone joint skeletal system has improved, the whole spine from coccyx to the neck will be flat on the floor. Good, change, arms down and eyes open. For a second set, you are welcome to do that exact same series of wind removing pose. Otherwise, I'll op offer a slightly different stretch called figure four. For figure four, you're gonna bend your legs, feet on the floor, and then bring your right ankle shin area to your left thigh. From here, lift your left foot off the floor. You can put your hands on your knees if you want and then start to pull down. So for figure four, you'll get this nice stretch to the outer right thigh while still keeping your back flat on the floor and putting a little bit of pressure on the lower abdomen. Feels so good. <laughs> Change, bring your left foot back down to the floor, right foot down and then other side, bring left ankle shin area to right thigh and start to lift your right foot off the floor Woo! and pull down and in. This posture is really good. If you ever have um, like sciatic nerve pain, this is your posture. Or, you know, if you talk to somebody in your family who's telling you that they have sciatica, tell them to do figure four. It's really good for uh, relieving pain from that, that really long nerve. Change, lower your right foot down, left foot down. And for the third part, lift both feet off the floor for happy baby. Flex your toes back towards your face and then try, see if you can catch the outsides of your feet. So I like to have my elbows inside my knees and my hands grabbing the outsides of the feet. And from here, you can rock back and forth like a happy baby. And if it feels good as you roll to the right, you can straighten your right leg. And as you roll to the left, you can straighten your left leg. This is a nice way just to massage out the back. Feels so good. Okay, come back to center, release the grip on your feet and slowly lower down, arms and legs down, Savasana, breathing in and emptying out. Next, we do a straight leg sit up, but if you have any concerns about your back, any history of slip discs, please feel free to skip the sit up. You just roll off to the side and meet us on your stomach. Otherwise, legs together, arms over your head, flex your feet. Keep your heels on the floor, take a breath. Hold your breath, stomach in, tuck your chin to your chest and sit up. <laughs> Exhale, elbows to floor, forehead to knees. Good, okay, turn, lie on your stomach for the spine strengthening series, starting with Cobra Bhujangasana, good for your lower lumbar spine. Place your hands flat on the floor. Oh, and before I forget, we're gonna, we're gonna flow the next four postures together. That's how it's done in the Vishnu Gosh sequence of yoga, where Bikram learned yoga. So that's how we're gonna do it today. So we're gonna flow the next four postures. The more you know. Okay, hands to the floor, elbows pointing up, feet together, toes and heels touch, lock your legs, look up and lift, stretch your upper body off the floor. Use 100% back strength. Come up halfway only, keep your belly button on the floor, elbows stay bent, feet together, toes, heels touch, lock your legs, push your feet down, hips down, hands down, look up, chin up, chest up, stretch up, breathe up. Good, change, slowly lower down. Keep your chin forward and this time bring your arms straight 
down by your sides for locust, shalabhasana. Palms face the floor, knuckles face the ceiling. Wiggle your arms underneath you, right left, right left, high ho, high ho. One day pinky fingers touch, lock your right leg, point your right toes and lift your right leg up. I'll tell you a secret every time as a teacher I say right left, right left, I always think hi ho, hi ho, it's off to yoga we go. Lock your right leg, point your right toes, lift your heel up, change right leg down, relax your right leg, lock your left leg, point your left toes and lift your left leg up. So stretch the big toe to the back wall, walk your left leg, lift your heel up, press your shoulders down. Change, left leg down, third part. Tuck your chin in, mouth down, mouth on your mat, so you have a nice long neutral neck. Spread your shoulders wide and bring your arms a little closer underneath you. So shoulders stretching apart, shoulders down to the floor, triceps tight, feet together, toes, heels touch, lock your legs, squeeze your butt, point your toes, and lift both legs up. Come up, everybody come up, struggle a little harder, don't give up, lock your legs, Point your toes, feet together, lift your thighs up. Good, change, slowly lower down. Release your arms, full locus, Purna Shalabhasana. Keep your chin forward, arms out to the side like airplane wings, feet together, toes and heels touch. Lock your legs, point your toes, look up towards the ceiling and lift. Arms, body, head, legs, everything lifts off the floor, so good. 747, taking off, just your hip bones on the floor, the rest of your body's in the air. Look up to the ceiling where your eyes go, body nose to follow. Now lift your thighs up, chin up, chest up, look up, come up a little higher at the end. Good, change, slowly lower down. Dhanurasana, floor bow, last one, chin on the floor, bend your legs, grab your feet from the outside. I always have to adjust my stomach a little bit. Grab your feet from the outside, point your toes look up towards the ceiling and start to kick into your hands. Continuously keep kicking, good, without stopping, without intermission, it's the kick that drives the posture. Roll forward a little bit and then freeze between your ribs and hips, hold still. Do the little sips of air in and out through your nose, bring your knees in, feet out, wrist straight, point your toes, look up, kick, 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 good, change, slowly, lower down, look to your right, left ear on your mat, arms down, palms face the ceiling, toes together, Heels fall open, belly savasana, breathing in and breathing out. Slowly lift your head and look to the other side, right here on your mat. So 26 and 2 yoga, right? It's Bikram yoga is based out of um, the Ghosh lineage of yoga, out of Kalpana. And in 26 and 2, there's some interesting elements. Like our version of triangle pose is quite unique. In fact, it's believed, you know, Bikram was a bodybuilder as well. So if you've ever been to a bodybuilding competition and you see them do lunges like that, like it's believed that he, you know, chose to make triangle like that as kind of a melting of those two worlds. So some of it, it's like actually not super traditional yoga. Um, but there's some parts of 26 and 2 yoga or Ghosh yoga that I think are just brilliant. And um, the sequence of the spine strengthening series is one of those things that I find beautiful, almost in a like Fabinacci sequence kind of way. The sequence of how we move our spine in these four postures, I find to be quite poetic and so good for strengthening your back. So let's do it again. Second set, chin on the floor, hands on the floor. You have an option to do second set the same way that you did first set or open your feet to about mat width distance. Walk your hands back a few more inches so your thumbs are close to your ribs and push your hands into the floor to straighten your arms. Okay, try to keep your hips on the floor. So if your thighs are lifting up, try to push the hips down, squeeze your butt, point your toes, roll your shoulders back and down, bend your legs and see if you can touch head to toes. Good, change, slowly lower down. Locust, chin forward, arm straight position. Bring your arms underneath you, right, left, right, left. Lock your right leg, point your right toes and lift your right leg up. And if you'd like, tuck your left toes under and then lift your left thigh up. So see if you can lift your right leg all the way up. Good, change right foot down. Other side, lock your left leg, point your left toes and lift your left leg up. Same thing, you can tuck your right toes under if you'd like to feel what it feels like to have more weight in your shoulders. Change, left leg down, grand finale, mouth down, chin to your mat, bring your arms a little closer. Lock your legs, point your toes, and lift both legs up. And in this one, if you want to try separating your legs, go for it. See if you can come up more. Shoulders down, and then bring your feet back together. Lock your legs. 
change, lower down, full locust, arms out to the side like airplane wings. Second set, you're welcome to open your feet for this one as well. Last miss, I know, lock your legs, point your toes, look up and lift. So in 26 and two yoga, because it's beginner focused, we do really intentional things with like keeping the feet together. That's on purpose, but you know, like Picasso, once you learn the basics, then you have a little bit of fun. So if you'd like, bring your feet back down to the floor, hands a little bit up and then see if you can lift up and back. Good change, slowly, lower down. I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to do that. Donna Ross in a second set floor boat, chin on the floor, bend your legs, two options. You can grab your feet from the outside as you always do, or you can grab your feet from the inside with your thumbs in between your big toe and second toe. From here, look up and start to kick. And if you'd like to try a little bit of a shoulder rotation for full bow, you bend one or both elbows in and forward, drop your head back when the head and toes touch. Good, slowly reverse out, take your time. Lower down, look to the right, left ear on your mat, breathing in and breathing out. And then lift your head and look to the left, right ear on your mat, breathing in and breathing out. You're welcome to do five push-ups here if you'd like. I'm not sure if I can today. Let's see what happens. Bring your chin forward. I'm definitely going to do them on my knees and we'll do some push-ups. Not my best push-ups, that's okay. Okay, come to the top of your mat and towel. Same thing, the next four postures are what we call the fixed firm series. We're gonna flow the next four postures twice. Start in tabletop, open your feet, open your knees, and as you're ready, walk your hands back and eventually sink your hips down between your heels. Doesn't have to happen today or tomorrow. You can keep your hands in front of you, beside you, or behind you the whole time. If you can sit down between your heels and you're not in pain, that's a big and, Put your hands on your feet, bend your right elbow down, stopping anywhere you feel a point of pain. Left elbow down, knees never come off the floor. Drop your head back, head to floor. Tuck your chin in, neck, shoulders on the floor. Arms over your head, grab your elbows, each other, and hold. Wherever you are is just perfect. You want a gentle stretch through your toes, ankles, knees, and hips, but never a point of pain. Change, put your hands on your feet, push yourself up, hug up last, and then bring your knees and feet together at the middle of your mat and towel for half tortoise. Hips on your heels, arms over your head, palms together, cross your thumbs, stretch up, and slowly go down. Forehead to floor, little fingers to floor. Try to get elbows and wrists off the floor. Palms in prayer, thumbs crossed. Just the knife edges of your pinky fingers touch the floor, the rest of your arms in the air, Keep your chin away from your chest. Like you're not bending your neck, but you're also not rounding it, right? You want your neck as long as the rest of your body. As you inhale, reach your arms forward. As you exhale, sink your hips down, stretch, stretch, stretch. Change slowly, come up, and we're gonna go to camel pose. So now stand on your knees, open your knees and feet, six inches between knees and feet. Place your hands on your lower back, thumbs outside, fingers down to the floor. Take a moment, get your bearings, keep your eyes open, look up towards the ceiling. Lift your nose, lift your chin, let your head drop back. Option to stay here or go back halfway and freeze in the middle. Right hand down, grab your right heel. Left hand down, grab your left heel. Thumbs outside, fingers inside, full palm grip on your heels. Push your hips forward, lift your chest up, drop your head back, look for your toes behind you. Good, change, put your hands on your back, push yourself up with the help of your hands. Bring your knees, feet together for rabbit, sasangasana, hips to heels, reach back, grab your heels from the outside, thumbs outside, fingers inside, full palm grip on your heels, stretch up. Tuck your chin to your chest and go down. Round your spine, tuck your chin to your chest, bring forehead to knees, automatically top of head to floor. Pull on your heels, don't lose the grip, lift your hips up. If there is a gap between your knees and head, you can walk your knees up one by one, the head stays in place. 
Squeeze your heels together, press your hips forward, lift your shoulders up, suck your stomach in, round your spine. Good, change hips down, slowly uncurl. Vertebra by vertebra, disc by disc, head up, last. Turn around, Savasana. I'm gonna check the time real quick. Okay, great. So option to take a long, luxurious Savasana or join me in a core strengthening exercise. If you'd like to do that core strengthening exercise, bend your legs so your feet are on the floor and then lift your feet off the floor so that your knees are over your hips and your shins are parallel to the ceiling. Interlock your fingers, lift your head off the floor and bring your hands under the nape of your neck. From here, start to straighten your right leg towards the back wall and bring right elbow towards left knee and then pull back to center. Straighten your left leg and bring left elbow towards right knee and then pull back to center. Right leg long, right elbow to knee, pull back. Left leg long, left elbow to knee, pull back, and then pick up the pace. Right and left. Toes slightly activated, toes a little pointed for five, four, three, two, one. Change, lower back down, savasana, slow inhale, and slow exhale. Option to roll off to the side and skip the sit up or legs together, arms over your head, flex your feet, squeeze your seat, sit up. Good. Okay. Come towards the middle of your mat and towel for a second set of all four of those postures. You're welcome to do second set just as you did first set or I'll provide you some different options. Second set fix firm. If first set was tough, try opening your knees wider. If first set was easy peasy, pumpkin easy, bring your knees together, but keep your feet apart. Walk your hands back, sink your hips down. If you can sit between your heels, put your palms on your soles, right elbow, left elbow, head back, head to floor, tuck your chin in, neck shoulders on the floor, arms over your head, grab your elbows each other and hold. So for those of you that can do this posture like every time, like you have healthy knees, healthy ankles, you're feeling good, um, I have an optional way to get a little bit of a deeper stretch to the kneecaps and tops of the thighs. So uh, totally optional, but if you'd like, if you're all the way in and you have healthy knees, squeeze your butt and try lifting your butt off the floor. Press your hips up and then lower down. Two more times, engage your glutes and lift your hips towards the ceiling, stretching the front of the legs, the knees, lower down. Last time, squeeze your tush, lift your hips high and change, lower down, hands to your feet everybody together. Ooh, push yourself up, head up last. Come to the middle of your mat and towel. Second set, fixed firm. You can do just as you did for uh, first knees, feet together, or you can join me in a wide-legged child's pose. So feet together, but open your knees, and for child's pose, you're going to put your hands on the floor and walk your hands forward. So child's pose, the palms are on the floor and the arms can rest down, head to the floor, Reach your arms forward, sink your hips down, re-energize, reorganize, revitalize. Change, hands on the floor, walk yourself up and then stand up on your knees for a second set of camel. Okay, second set of camel, try opening your knees a little wider, eight to 10 inches between your knees, six inches between your feet. You are welcome to do second set, trying to grab your heels or with hands on the back, or you can try opening your shoulders for full camel. So if you'd like to do that, you're gonna bring your hands together at heart center and relax your head back. And from there, you're basically gonna try and play patty cakes with the wall behind you, like you're trying to high five the wall behind you. So you'll start by bringing your right hand back. So fingers pointing to the floor, and then bring right hand back in and then reach the left hand back like you're trying to high five the back wall bring the hand back in and then both arms back so patty cake patty cake baker's man and eventually you'll go back and eventually hands to floor and eventually head to toes okay we're going to be intentional with how we reverse out of it. If you're grabbing your heels, put your hands on your back and push up. If you're in full camel, hands together, push yourself up. Woo. 
Woo! And then come down for either second set rabbit, hips on heels. If you're doing rabbit, feel free to go into it, stretch up and roll down. Otherwise, we can try shoulder stand um, or plow pose, which is pretty fun. So if you'd like to join me for that, fly on your back with your hands under your butt, palms face the floor. Lift your legs up towards the ceiling and see if you can lift your hips up and overhead. So eventually feet come to the floor. This is plow pose. If you'd like to try shoulder stand, bend your elbows so that your palms are on your lower back. Keep your hands on your lower spine for support and start to lift your hips. Pardon me, lift your toes up towards the ceiling and press your hips forward. Option to stay here or try plow pose again. If you can touch your feet to the floor, and that's a big if, if you can touch your feet to the floor and plow, Try bending your knees. This is called ear pressure pose. Grab your heels and pull down. So now it's an awful lot like rabbit pose, right? Okay, if you're in ear pressure, grabbing your heels, start by placing your hands back down on the floor, plow pose, and then slowly roll out, hips to the floor, hands to the floor. And if you'd like a counter stretch of fish pose, bring your arms under your body, palms face the floor, bend your elbows and drop your head back. So in um, plow and shoulder stand, we have our chin tucked to our chest. So we trap some prana, some life force in, uh, energy in the throat. So then we do fish pose where we open the throat to release that energy. Okay, slowly bring your head back down, bring your arms out and everybody together, Savasana. <laughs> Breathing in and breathing out. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. <laughs> Wonderful, come to the middle of your mat and towel for head to knee, stretching and spine twist, all back to back, first set normal. Right leg out to the top right corner of your mat, left leg in. Two legs should make an L, a 90 degree angle, no wider, so your hips stay square. Inhale, arms overhead, stretch up. Exhale, turn to your right, tuck your chin to your chest and go down. The goal is to touch your head and knee together. You can bend your right leg as much as you want. Touch your knee and head together, front side compression. Interlock your fingers, flex your toes back, bend your elbows down. Left elbow down, left shoulder down, roll into the left. Good, change, arms up, left leg out, right leg in, heel to costume. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, turn to your left, tuck your chin to your chest, bend your left leg as much as you need, touch your knee and head together. Slowly over time, you'll lengthen your leg or even walk your leg, elbows down, elbows to floor, right hip down, right knee down, right shoulder down, right elbow down, then change, arms up, both legs out in front of you. If you're skipping, sit up, stay here. Otherwise, lay down, let your spine realign, and sit up. <laughs> For Paschimottanasana stretching, bend your knees, hook onto your big toes with your middle and index fingers, thumbs on top, and scoot your butt back. So in stretching pose, Rather than rounding your spine to compress your stomach, you want to arch your spine to stretch your stomach. So chin and chest stay lifted, shoulders back. You can keep your knees bent at first, just folding forward, stomach to thighs, chest to knees. Eventually legs will straighten or even lock. And then you want to go down with a flat back, pull and stretch. Good, change, come on up, stay seated for spine twists. Take a moment, identify left, identify right. Don't mix them up, bend your left leg on the floor. Touch your right heel to your left knee corner, right hand close behind you, left arm up and over. Grab your left knee with your left hand, hand, heel, and knee all touch. Inhale, stretch up, stomach in. Exhale, look over your right shoulder and twist. You can keep your right hand behind you for balance. You can also grab your hip, your waistband, one day your inner thigh. Inhale, stretch up, stomach in. Exhale, look over your right shoulder, twist, twist, twist. Good, change, unwind, swap out your legs. Bend your right leg on the floor, touch your left heel to your right knee corner, left hand behind you, right arm up and over, grab right knee with right hand, hand, heel, and knee touch. Inhale, stretch up, exhale, look over your left shoulder, twist. Try not to lean back, right? You want to be sitting up nice and tall the whole time. If you can balance here, take your left hand behind you and wrap for a half bind. Inhale, stretch up, exhale, look back, twist, twist, twist. Good, change, unwind, turn around, savasana. As a teacher, that spine twist at the end of class, especially when you're a new teacher, is so stressful to teach because there's so many lefts or rights. I think 
the first year that I taught, I would get them mixed up all the time. I was speaking to somebody who, who I know who recently started practicing yoga and they jokingly said like, you know, my goal is to really be able to figure out my lefts from my rights. And I was like, bad news, I'm 10 years in and I still get left and right mixed up all the time. <laughs> Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Right, we can figure out how to balance on a leg, on our head, on our arms, but somehow right and left is still a little too much for me, at least. Bend your left leg in, right leg out. And for second set, if you'd like, try a wider stance. So now your hips are open rather than square. You can place your right hand on in the, in, the, in the inner leg or the outer leg, and then reach your left arm up overhead for a side body stretch. Now, eventually you can even come down and catch your right foot with one or both hands. Option to look forward or look up towards the ceiling, left hip down, right shoulder forward. Good, change, come on up, other side, left leg out, right leg in, gentle activation of the left foot. You don't have to flex it all the way back, but you want that foot a little activated. You can have your foot inside the leg or outside the leg, reach your right arm up overhead for a side body stretch. You can stay here or come down, eventually catching your left foot with one or both hands, try to press the right hip down, left shoulder forward, right shoulder back, open your chest like a flower petal blooming. If you're looking up, look forward and then reverse out and stretching, bring your right leg out. Same thing, gentle activation of the feet. You can try pointing or flexing either way, but just a little bit of activation of the feet. Put your hands on the floor and start to fold forward like you're a pancake, mm, pancakes. Eventually forearms to floor, eventually stomach to floor, stretch. Change, come on up, spine twist. Three options. Option one, sit crisscross applesauce. Option two, left leg out in front of you, put your right foot on top of your left thigh for half lotus. Notice that this is like our version of tree pose, but we're sitting rather than standing. Option three, if you can do half lotus, try a full lotus, go wild, left foot on top. Right hand close behind you, reach your left arm up and over, place left hand on right knee. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over your right shoulder and twist. You can keep your right hand behind you or wrap around. And if you're in half lotus or lotus, see if you can catch your right big toe with your right hand. I said that correctly. See if you can catch your right foot with your right hand. Crazy. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look back, twist, twist, twist. Good, change, slowly unwind. We'll do the other side. So if you're sitting crisscross applesauce, reverse. I know it's really weird. If you're doing half lotus, left foot on top. However, if you're doing full lotus in traditional yoga across pretty much every style of yoga, the right foot is always on bottom. Okay. Left hand close behind you, right arm up and over. Grab right knee with left hand, inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over left shoulder twist. You can keep your left hand behind you or wrap it around and grab left big toe with left hand. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, stomach in, look over your left shoulder twist, twist, twist. Good, change, unwind. And if you have lotus pose, try what's called down lotus. Reach your right hand behind you, catch right big toe with right hand, reach your left hand behind you, catch left toe with left hand. And this is what's called down lotus. So all those spine twists, half lotus, tree pose, all that stuff is preparing us for this. Good, change, unwind, turn around, savasana. So one of the other things that I really love about 26 and two yoga, it is wonderful in and of itself. It is my main form of body movement and like wellness, especially during COVID. Um, but it's also a really good entryway into other styles of yoga and other more intermediate or advanced postures. So like if you practice the half bind in our version of spine twist, it opens up some other bound postures in yoga as well. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. <sighs> Wonderful, come to the middle of your mat space for Kabbalabhati breathing. First set normal, sit knees, feet together, hips on your heels, hands on your thighs, arms straight. You're gonna exhale through your mouth. <sighs> As you exhale through your mouth, suck your stomach in. When the stomach relaxes, the lungs automatically take in air. If you think about it too much, it's really hard, but if you just Exhale, exhale, exhale. The lungs will automatically take care of the inhale. Pretty cool. Lick your lips swallow a couple times. Sit up tall. Concentrate, meditate. Don't forget to have fun. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So you're welcome to do 
second set like that, or you can try another version of Kapalabhati. In fact, in every other style of yoga except 26 and 2 yoga, Kapalabhati breathing is through the nose. So you're going to exhale through your nose rapidly as you engage your abdominal wall, and then the lungs will take care of the inhale through the nose. It's a little bit of a different feeling. You're, you'll really feel your lungs like contracting with the exhale, which I think is pretty cool, but sometimes it might not feel like you're actually doing much. So from time to time, I will place my hand under my nose just to make sure that I'm actually doing what I think I'm doing. Take an inhale and begin. Five, four, three, two, one. Good for you. Honor yourself. Give yourself a hug. High five. Pat on the back. Turn around. Final savasana. Apologies, we ended one or two minutes late. So if you need to leave, I totally understand. But if you have time, make time. Final savasana. You can open your arms and legs. Close your eyes. Roll out your butt and shoulders. Whatever feels good. And then just take a deep, life-giving breath. Take a moment to acknowledge all of your hard work. Not just, you know, like the yoga that you practice, right? But the showing up, that is often the hardest part. Like you had to make a lot of conscious decisions today in order to make it to this class. I know that, right? And you know that too. So please take a moment just to acknowledge all of your hard work during class, but throughout the day as well. And I don't mean hard work in the like, you know, puritanical, capitalist sense. I mean, like you're doing good stuff, right? You're moving your body, you're breathing into your body, you're being intentional with your thoughts, with your breath, with your movements, practicing self-care. Good for you. That is important work. It is hard work. And today you got it done. Take a slow inhale through your nose. Slow exhale through your nose. You are so very alive. 